As a historian, I think it's really cool when we look just at the, the very short history of the Restoration, we can see how discussion of priesthood keys, offices, responsibilities have evolved over time. And sometimes we worry about, oh no, if, like if something is real and true, can it change? Mm -hmm. um, but the blessing of ongoing revelation implies ongoing change. So for example, in the, um, around the turn of the century, we had uh, teachers' quorums and deacons' quorums were constructed quite differently from how, were organized quite differently from how they're organized today. In the past, teachers and deacons were all adult men, and young boys weren't allowed to hold the Aaronic priesthood. They, they, they couldn't be deacons or teachers. And these um, deacons and teachers' quorums were always empty because people kept on moving on to the Melchizedek priesthood quorum. So they, they were always, they needed to be filled and there was no one to do these roles. And so around that time, they said, well, let's have the young boys um, start taking on these roles. And they began ordaining boys in the early 20th century. So this is all to say that over time, um, our understandings of priesthood have evolved. And I'd say probably the most recent turn is this discourse by people like President Nelson, President Oaks, kind of broadening this idea of priesthood and making these distinctions between priesthood power, um, priesthood authority, authority mm -hmm. priesthood offices, keys. Um, and so this, this is like further um, theologization, <laughs> theologizing. <laughs> Theologizing, I like theologizing. Further, further theologizing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, which again is how ongoing revelation works. So I just think as a historian, it's cool to see these changes. Mm -hmm.